من المهاجرين والأنصار from the ones who emigrated and the helpers الأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان. The problem is, if I'm not saying they did, but if they did commit bad or wrongs, then I would disassociate myself from them. That's fine. That's how. That's our stance. In fact, that's what okay. I mean. For example, when Khalid ibn Walid, one of the companions, a late comer to Islam. He committed some uh, acts which are uh, haram. Mm. In fact, he, he killed some civilians and so on. Okay. And when he killed some civilians, and he and the Prophet Sallam, he went back to the Prophet, and then the Prophet Sallam he said, "Ana bari umim sanahu Khalid." I am disassociated from what Khalid did, okay. which is a, which actually is interesting because it responds to those who say that Islam is a terroristic religion as well, because obviously, if he was endorsing of this, then he would have he would have just acquiesced to it. But the point is, is that. Uh, where the companions make mistakes, we don't say that they're infallible. Our position with the companions is not that they're perfect and everything they do is right. We say that the companions are legitimate transmitters of history. This is the major difference between Sunnis and Shia because, by and large, or in generality, we say they were Udul, they were just and upright and good people. And that's not what I say, that's what the Quran says. The Quran says that. And so the question is, how does one explain the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ The ones who are the foremost ones and the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the ones who preceded the matter from the muhajirs, the ones who emigrated, and the ansar, the helpers وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ And those who followed them in goodness رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ that Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. And Allah has prepared for them heavens under which rivers flow. They're, they're in, in those heavens, heavens forever. Uh, you know, that's what Allah says about them. So there's many, many verses like that, but this is just one of them. And we know that Umar ibn Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, uh, individuals who would otherwise be cursed by the Shia, those are included in that verse because they are individuals who emigrated to, uh, to Medina from Mecca. Okay, but I'd say this, what defines good from bad? Because if you say saying follow the companions in what they did was good, what was good, what, what, what is the line down the middle for what is bad and what is good? Because um, certain things can obviously take you out of the fold of Islam. Um, and also certain things um, are that bad that I don't Yeah, I get you. But like, for example, the Shia, they don't like the wives of the Prophet, except for Khadija, uh, anha. Apart from that, he had 13 wives in recorded history that he married, nine at one time, according to Ibn Qayyim. Now, these women, for example, Aisha and Hafsa and those, these kinds of women, yeah? These kinds of women that he married, if if they're bad, cross the point where it became uh, kufri, like the, you know disbelief, then how could the marriage still stand? Because the Prophet, uh, the Quran says, you know, مَكَانَ uh, الْمُؤْمِنِينَ what do you call it? Sorry, ولا تنكح المشركات حتى يؤمن. Don't 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 um, kind of marry the polytheist women until they become believers. And one of the nullifiers of a marriage is if a woman becomes a polytheist. If she becomes a, poly a disbeliever of Islam, likewise if a, a man becomes a disbeliever of Islam and he's in a marriage with a woman, then that nullifies the marriage. But we don't know that. It, all history indicates that the marriage continues, in fact, until the very last day of the Prophet's life, where he was literally on the lap of Aisha radiallahu anha. So if the situation reached that, that level, then how could we explain these facts? Do you see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying that if we just look carefully at the Quran and we look at what the hadith say, I just actually just look at the Quran by itself. For example, in the last uh, verse of Surah Al-Fatih, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Muhammad Rasulullah, wal-lazina ma'hu ashida al kufar rahmat bainahum." And continues, the ayah continues. But the point is, is that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And the ones who are with him, and then Allah praises them, saying that they are mighty with the disbelievers. And they are merciful amongst themselves. You see them in you see them in sujood, you see them in prostration, and ruku'ah, in bowing. 
uh, you know, and these other ayahs. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, that, that Allah is pleased with the ones who give bay'ah or pledge of allegiance of you under the tree. And we know that under the tree, that included all of the Sahaba, included Uthman and Omar and all those. So let me ask you a question here. If a Sahabi, let's say Imam Ali was picked at Gadir, if a Sahabi then goes against her, does that make him a bad Sahaba? Well, look, I mean, like the, what happened in Ghadir Khum is that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, man ka- I, know, I know the Sunni narration. It's the same. Yeah, it's, I'm talking about the Shia narration. Let's say the Shia narration is true. If then Abu Bakr went against that, what, what, what is... Uh, uh, no, no, the narration is the same, it's the interpretation that's different. Yeah, the narration is the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, the, so uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said that whoever is my Mawla, then Hadha Ali Mawla. This uh, Ali is Mawla, his Mawla as well. The question is what they, the, 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 the controversy is that the Sunnis say that Mawla means, some Sunnis say Mawla means friend. Yeah. And the Shia say no, it means that leader or, or the, my ma- uh, master or leader or something like that. What I say is, fine, let's just say it's talking about master, let's use that, let's go with the Shia narration, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't agree, we don't disagree with the fact that the Prophet is uh, encouraging the people to follow Ali radiallahu anhu. And that whoever is, uh, whoever takes me as the master, then he, this Ali is also the master, meaning you should listen to him just like you listen to me. You, I am allied. Uh, if you're allied to me, because Mawla also means ally, allyship, then, then Ali has to be allied to you as well. But then again, it goes back to the point that I made originally, which is uh, who knew the leader better, who knew who was best to be the leader better than anybody else? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet. So you can't escape that. Okay, no problem. And for example, uh, yeah. even with the rest of the, the Imams, with okay. the rest of the 11 Imams, yeah, yeah. they were divinely appointed. Okay. So they had. Okay. They they were the best for the job, and we yeah. know they were best for the job okay. because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beat them. Whereas if we say the companions were able to choose for themselves, then there's a problem because there were a lot of hypocrites around the Prophet at, at the time before his death and throughout his life. Yeah, but there would be a wisdom in the fact that Allah, he puts in place a system of elect, uh, election. The wisdom would be that if the Prophet puts a sunnah, that every time there's a political leader who's a Muslim, that there has to be divinely appointed, yeah, then that wouldn't leave for us a mechanism through which we can uh, appoint our political leaders. Like for example now, in the Islamic world, how would we choose a political leader? Islam actually has a system, okay? Now that system is based on the model of the Sahaba. Now what I'm saying is, if everything had to be divinely appointed, it wouldn't have been practical for us because we don't, we're not recipients of revelation. So the, it makes sense that it's a, the election argument is actually, as I say, is, is an argument that makes sense because with it one can say, yeah, that, well, now if we wanted to elect someone new, this, these are the steps that one would have to take. And I think this is also a false dichotomy. They say it's either a divine election or, sorry, it's either election or divine appointment. Well, what if we say that the divine appointment is through election? Is God not able to decide that there's a, a, there is a way which is ordained by himself, which is following of the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad which means for an election process? I think that there's not a strong enough or cogent enough argument to say that actually the uh, election, where there's a, there's a way that people come together and say who's the best for the job, okay, what is referred to as Ahl Hali wal Aqd, the people who are most qualified for the job, that that is uh, actually an illegitimate means. There's not a really good argument for it. They say what? Well, yeah. Human beings have free will. Yeah. So they have the choice to choose. So they can either choose to do wrong or choose to do good. So in, in these, under these circumstances, 
what you say and I don't believe is valid because of free will and the choice to choose to do wrong and the choice to do wrong. Okay, let me ask you a question. Hassan was he one of the Imams? Al Hassan. Yes, he was. He was, right? So he was the son of Ali, right? Yes. According to the Shia, and we have to point out also that the Shias are not united on how many Imams there are. Ismaili said there's eight Imams. There's others that say no, there are four Imams. The, and the Isna Ashariya, who you probably have interactions with, they say there are 12 Imams. Yeah. So the idea of 12 Imams is not something, it's not a point of unanimous agreement. And there's not one single verse in the Quran that indicates 12 Imams. Okay. However, having said that, let's go to the second point. The, the, uh, Al Hassan, he stepped down from Muawiyah, from Muawiyah to become the leader. Mm. That's well known. It's, it's documented in our books and it's documented in the Shia's books. Mm. Now they consider Muawiyah to be a kafir. They actually consider him to be a disbeliever. Yeah. That is the opinion of the Shia. Yeah. He is not just a fasiq, but he's actually a disbeliever as well. Yeah. But the Quran says, You know, that by Allah they don't believe until they put you in charge of Muhammad of what they, uh, of, uh, of their disputes. And it also says, Whoever does not rule by what Allah has revealed, then they're disbelievers. And Allah also mentions in the Quran, is it the, 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 the rules of the pre-ignorant Arabs that you want? The, the point is, is that if you cannot have, by ijma, you cannot have a disbelieving person being the emir of the mu'mineen. You can't have a Khalifa who is a non one of the conditions of being a Caliph is to be a Muslim. But the thing is, brother, he was still the Khalifa because it was his God-given right. So regardless if he gave the worldly Caliphate to Muawiyah, then it doesn't matter because he had the God-given right. He was the, the Imam. But how do you, how do you define Khalifa? How do I define Khalifa? Yeah. Leader. All right, so what kind of leader? Political leader. Political leader. Yeah. All right, so do we agree that Al Hassan, he stepped down and he made Muawiyah the political leader? Yes. To avoid bloodshed? Yes. That happened, yeah? Yes. Okay, so now Al Hassan is saying, now this person, Muawiyah, is going to be the leader. He's going to, by the way, meaning when, when there's a time for prayer, he's going to lead the people in prayer. Meaning that, you know, he can marry whatever Muslim woman that he wants. Meaning that when he dies, we have to pray Janazah over him. Meaning that when he goes to war and does jihad, that we have to follow him. Meaning that all of these things. No, 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 brother. No? Because of corrupt people. And I don't mean to be offensive. No, okay, yeah, 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 all right. Those who are corrupt, follow the corrupt. Whereas okay. those who are pious follow the pious. But Hassan followed Muawiyah. Does that mean Hassan is corrupt? I don't believe he did. No, no, he, he put him in place and now he became a follower from becoming a leader. So he's now a follower, right? No, 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 because his leadership is um, spiritual, that of a spiritual leadership, whereas Muawiyah's was yeah. that of a world. No, but as we said, I, I, as I'm saying, being uh, even the leader from a worldly perspective, yeah? Khalifa. For example, when the Quran says uh, about David, We have made you the Khalifa of the, of the earth, so uh, be a judge uh, uh, you know, among the people. Meaning, the word Khalifa here in the Quran indicates actual uh, political authority yeah okay. so khalifa is political authority according to the quran it's not just spiritual leadership when allah says inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ardi to dawood he wasn't saying now we've made you a spiritual leader he is saying now i've given you authority political authority in the land do you see the point because otherwise that verse would not make any sense yeah but the difference is like i said the righteous follow the righteous if if that if Dawood was given caliph, the caliphate and he was righteous, that automatically makes it a spiritual leadership. No, but what, what I'm trying to say, sorry, here you go. Because he's, sorry, no, go on. No, what I'm saying is that the word Khalifa itself indicates a political authority. That's all. Pardon? That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, that's it. That's all. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> nothing further. That's what it dictates. 
<laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. Because, it, because, and I'm saying that, it means that because the Quran makes that clear. Inna ja'annaka khalifatan fil ard. We have made you a leader on the earth. This whole thing about spiritual thing is a, is a Shi'i insertion because they have to try and make sense of it. Okay, give me the evidence from the Quran. I don't need to give you evidence. Okay. It's logical. Okay. So if a, if somebody becomes a caliph yeah. and is righteous, that automatically gives them a spiritual leadership. Okay, let me ask you a question. Before Allah said to David, who's a prophet in the Quran, you agree David is a prophet? Yes. Is David a prophet? Yes. Okay. David is a prophet in the Quran. When Allah says to him, Inna ja'annaka khalifa fil abdi, we have made you khalifa on the earth. Was he not a spiritual leader before that? Say that again. Let me say that one more time. One more time. Before Allah said to David in the Quran, Inna ja'annaka khalifa fil abdi, we have made you a caliph on the earth, on the land, yeah? Well, before he said that, David, who is a prophet, are you, is that to suggest that he did not have spiritual leadership? I, do, I don't really know the verse you're referring to, so I wouldn't be able to comment. No, no, no. I'm saying that David is a prophet. Yes. David. Is a prophet a spiritual leader? Lord, a prophet is somebody who receives revelation. Yeah, so is he a spiritual leader? No, he's not. Okay. I don't believe he is. So a prophet is not a spiritual leader? No. So what are prophets, what, what do they come with? They receive revelation, yeah. and they give the revelation to the people. Okay, so what is, a, what is a spiritual leader? What is a spiritual, a spiritual leader? leader is somebody who guides guides the people yes. in their affairs, yes. teaches, yes. And, but doesn't receive revelation. Oh, wait, wait. I'm saying that you say guides them in their affairs. He's a spiritual leader. He guides them in issues to do with spirituality. A prophet, does he guide the people on issues to do with spirituality? You could say so, yes. Yeah, of you course. Could say so. I mean, they are the most deserving of that title, correct? If the prophets are not spiritual leaders, then there are no such thing as spiritual leaders. Because Allah has sent prophets to guide the people. Are you, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, like, uh, yeah, I mean, they're the best of spiritual. Are you agree, right? Yes, they must be, even if they don't. By the way, there are some prophets who are not leaders of their nations, but they're still spiritual leaders. Right? Isn't that? Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, because Yusuf alayhi salam, he wasn't the leader of the nation, even though he was put in a position. Yes. Yeah. For example, but there are many other prophets like that. So, okay, what I'm saying is that if the word Khalifa indicates spiritual leadership, then why is so what did David gain now when Allah says inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard we have made you a khalifa on the lands he couldn't have gained spiritual leadership because he already had it that must mean that the word khalifa indicates a political authority just a political authority okay yeah so Allah he made David in control of the land just like the khalifa who was uh, who was Hassan yeah, Al Hassan, he was the Khalifa, we agree, and then he transferred that Khilafa to Muawiyah. What I'm saying is, if Hassan, Al Hassan, radiallahu an, if he considered Muawiyah as the Shi'a do, he considered him a kafir, a disbeliever, how can he put somebody who's a disbeliever in charge of Muslim people? He's leading, that means all the prayers are invalid, that means all his marriages are zina. That means that he can't do a uh, janazah prayer on him and that people are wasting their time by doing janazah prayer on him. That means that when he calls to jihad that he's a false leader, he shouldn't even be calling to jihad. That means that Al-Hassan, he decided to put a disbeliever in the affairs uh, or over the affairs of the Muslims, which goes against the Quran. <laughs> do you see the problem here? You must see the problem. You see the... Let's be honest. No, 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 no. This is not a problem. It's Can I ask you a question, bro? Brother, let me say something. To be honest, yeah? Hmm. Hmm. Come on. Let's be honest. No, no, no. It doesn't yeah? It doesn't so now, therefore, I say, look, it's not too late to leave Tashayyah because it doesn't make any sense. Shiaism doesn't make any sense. No, 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 no. As we've shown now, as we've shown, the Quran is very clear about you know about uh, the, the prophet, the, the sorry, the Sahaba have 
the stamp of approval from Allah Himself. We've shown that the narrative collapses. There's no evidence for the 12 Imams. There's no evidence for the infallibility of the Imams. There's no evidence for the fact that the Imams have the control over all things, as mentioned in Shia books. In fact, that's shirk, actually. That's disbelief. It's the same as thing as believing that Jesus is a God or something. That's what the Christians say. Therefore, I would say, leave this matter. Just come back to Islam, you know, the true Islam, which is following the Quran, following the Sunnah, following the Sahaba, because the Prophet ﷺ himself, he said, The best generation is my generation. The Quran, okay, you say that's hadith is a Sunni books. In the Quran it says, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَوْا وَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقِ فَسَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهِ If they believe in what you guys believe in, then they're on the right path. It says, Amen tum bihi. It doesn't say, Amen tabihi. Which means, you guys, the primary recipients of the Quran, who were indeed the Sahaba themselves. So our belief must match the belief of the Sahaba in order for us to be on the right path. The Quran states that. We'll leave it there, my brother. Yeah. Think about it, please, brother. Yeah. Jazakumullah khan, Habib. Yeah.